The former president and first lady Barack and Michelle Obama holding their third annual Obama Foundation Summit in Chicago earlier today. They took audience questions and spoke about empowering the next generation of leaders. They also talked about racism and how to be effective political activists. Let's discuss now. Charles Blow is here, Jen Psaki as well. So good to have both of you on. Thank you so much. Good to be here. Um, Jen, the former president talked about being a little too pious about, politi about politics. Listen. You know, this, this idea of purity and you're never compromised and you're always politically woke and all that stuff, I, you should get over that quickly. The world, the world is messy. There are ambiguities. People who do really good stuff have flaws. Like if I tweet or hashtag about how you didn't do something right, or use the word wrong verb, or then I can sit back and feel pretty good about myself. Because, man, you see how woke I was? I called you out. <laughs> Let me get on TV, <laughs> watch my show, watch Gronish. <laughs> um, you know, that's not, that's not activism. That, that's not bringing about change. Is that a, who's that message for? Is that a message for Democrats right there, Jen? I think in part, and uh, people running, but also certainly for the party. Uh, you know, I think at times the reaction to Donald Trump has been to uh, kind of put out these purity tests that say, if you don't meet these bars, if you're not with me on every single issue and you don't check every single box, then you can't be a part of the party. It is good to have big dreams and big aspirations. And I worked for Barack Obama for 10 years. There were a lot of things like making a deal with Iran and, and health care, Obamacare, that nobody thought was possible. That's important and should be a part of what the Democratic Party stands for. But if we are launching priority tests and saying you can't be a part of us, we're going to have such a small party um, that we're, we're not going to be able to win. And, you know, I think uh, what I, I was so great to see them out there. I'm biased, I know, but it was kind of soothing in the, the age of Trump to, to hear them out there and see them out there. And, you know, he governed uh, governing is not about saying you don't agree with me, you, won't, uh, you can't be a part of the conversation. And that was important, I think, for people to hear because yeah. governing especially is about compromise and about yeah. not letting the perfect be the enemy of the good. All right, let's bring Charles in. Charles, I want to play this. This is from the former First Lady uh, talking really candidly about racism and discrimination. Watch this. I can't make people af not afraid of black people. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. I can't explain what's happening in your head. But maybe if I show up every day as a human, a good human, doing wonderful things, loving my family, loving your kids, taking care of things that I care about, maybe, just maybe, that work will pick away at the scabs of your discrimination. Imagine having achieved becoming the first lady and still having to deal with that because, you know, you know what she's saying? Like, right. But I, but I, a lot I, of black folks feel that responsibility. Right, but I have. don't. Yeah. And I find, I find uh, centering someone else's opinion of you a tremendous waste of your time. I, I, I kind of live by the late Toni Morrison's uh, uh, concept that, um, that, you know, the great um, uh, kind of bad part about racism is that it's a distraction. It keeps you explaining things that don't need to be explained. And every moment that I uh, spend trying to get you to change something about you is a moment that I've taken away from loving my family, from uh, being a part of my career, from reading a good book or whatever I want to do that was edifying for me and my community and my family. You have to stop at some point centering the person, the racist person, and, and putting energy into changing that person's life. That, that is a double oppression. Asking the oppressed to fix the flaw in the, oppress the oppressor is another oppression. You have to come out of that and say to yourself, I am sufficient. Mm. I do not need to explain to you. I do not need to drag an, a, a person who is reluctant out of a cave and into the light. No. So it's not, it's not incumbent upon the oppressor to teach the oppressed. The other way around. Right, 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 the, right, the, right, oppressed, right. the oppressed to teach the oppressor. Right, and right. That, and, but I, I do think whether, I, I agree with what Toni Morrison says in your thing on that, but that is something that a lot of African Americans feel like, if I don't do it, who's going to teach them? But maybe but, it's but, not, but it's think, not But I want you to put it in this frame. Yeah. Think about, 
For 400 years, all the time and energy black people have spent trying to train out the racism out of white people, mm. trying to demonstrate that I am good enough, that, you know, that, that I'm smart enough, that I'm a good person, that I'm, I'm not pathologically flawed. And think about all that time and energy and what it could have been used for otherwise. Yeah. Uh, it was, Jen, I have to agree with you. It was interesting to see them out there. Um, and you don't have to be biased for that, but just people <laughs> out there who are speaking good who are actually trying to, not trying to be best, but are actually living their best lives and teaching others to do it as well and not dividing people. And they can actually formulate a sentence. It was just... <laughs> That's nice and refreshing, isn't it's it? It's refreshing.